us eight o'clock hour at Transform Our World Hawaii. Listen, it's not just the name of an organization. It's our kuleana. It's our responsibility to lock shields together uh, in a local and global community. And this morning, we got a very special message from our very special uh, person, Ed Savoso, to be able to learn how to conquer spiritual warfare. Warfare. How does Ed know so much about this? Well, <laughs> because he's been through it and you think he looks bad, you should see the other guy because the other guy looks worse. Ed, welcome. Thanks for joining us here this morning. Thank you for giving up your precious time to share this very important message with all of us here today. Thank you, Pastor Allen. Thank you, Hawaii Johanna. I am so blessed to be in the presence of the Lord and in your presence today. And, uh, and I'm already blessed. I already feel better. I see Christ more clearly because I'm looking at your faces, your smiles, your blessings. Thank you so much, so much. Um, I was asked to share and teach on a spiritual warfare. I'll get to that in a moment. But actually, uh, when I was praying about it, the Lord told me, don't teach on spiritual warfare, but do a spiritual warfare. Demonstrate what the spiritual warfare should is and should be done so that those that are in bondage will be set free now. Those that are hungry will be fed now. That an experience beats an argument, right? I mean, I don't know the guy who killed me, but one thing I know, I was blind and now I see. And so I'll get to that in a moment. But first, let me deal with an issue of protocol. We felt from the Lord that we should go back to Hawaii with TOW Global to have our global conference there. Um, we heard from the Lord, but you know how it is. God works through channels. And so we approached the leadership there, first Cal, and then through Cal others like Ellie and Allen and so forth. And they felt good about it. And so uh, we feel good about it. They feel good about it. But actually, none of us owns the place. You do. And so I'm coming to you to request your blessing, your right hand of fellowship, your blessing to do our conference there in October. As I'm trying to explain, we follow protocol because we have to get organized. We need to look at different options that are there. But none of that flies unless you give us the right hand of fellowship. Not just to come. I'm going to be very ambitious for you to co-host the conference with us. Picture for a moment if the Hawaiian Ohana can be there front and center. Not just to say, oh, by the way, we are in Hawaii, and the local people will speak a blessing. No, I humbly but passionately come before you and say, would you please consider a request to have your full blessing to do our conference there with you? It will be the first time that TOW has done a conference in full partnership with local people and native people. Now, I realize it will be unfair and out of protocol for me to ask for a showing of hands because I'm just asking. But I put the request front and center. And then I leave it up to the leaders to guide you through the process. But like the groom at the altar, I'll be waiting for that door to open, right? And for you to come and say, 
Pastor Ed, hopefully we welcome you. Okay, that's my request. Amen. Now, let me share with you. Uh, the Lord says, don't teach on a spiritual warfare. Demonstrate it. You see, the devil cannot get into your heart because greater is he who is in you than the one who is in the world. Period. But he can get into our mind and he can fool us and he can confuse us with what people call theology, which is not theology, it's doctrine. And many times it's not sound doctrine. I mean, if you look at Paul in the Bible, he's always correcting the wrong doctrine out there. So the devil gets into our hands, into our minds, and he fools us. In whatever you're going through today, let the Holy Spirit illuminate you. Whatever struggle you are having that you are losing. I'm not talking about the struggles you are winning. You don't need any help there. I'm talking about the ones that you are losing. And we all do. With unforgiveness, with lack of fulfillment, with pain, with anxiety, with lack of intimacy, with an addiction. Whatever that struggle is, is because the devil has done a number in our minds and has built a stronghold. And even though we know what the will of God is, we don't think we can live according to the will of God. The devil has a very limited field of operation. He cannot kill you because your days are numbered and God decides when. But how many times he threatens you with killing you? You're going to die. You're going to die. <laughs> and the Bible says that he held people captive by the fear of death. Not by death. He doesn't control death. But he dispenses fear of death. It's a mirage. He cannot kill you. But I plead guilty. There has been times when I felt, oh my goodness, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Lord, help me. The devil got me. Scratch that one. He cannot kill you. He cannot destroy your body unless you destroy it first, because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He cannot take away your salvation because your name is written down in heaven, not with ink, but with the precious red blood of Jesus. But he can fool you. And during communion, the brother that officiated brought up the point of offense when we take offense at people, and we take offense because they did something wrong to us. No one gets angry unless somebody did something wrong to them. The person that gets angry is usually the one that is right. If somebody does something good for you, you don't get angry. You get angry when somebody does something wrong to you. And the question is, what do I do when somebody betray me? What do I do when somebody did something wrong? And it it's at that moment, folks, when we fail to exercise the grace of God that was given to us to forgive us and extend it to the one that is offending us, that boom, the devil gains a stronghold. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, and he was betrayed by a disciple that sat at the table with him, that listened to his teaching, that walked with him, that was entrusted with the funds of the ministry. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus says, the prince of darkness is coming, but he has no claim in me because I already forgave. I'm going to go to the cross. I'm going to suffer all the pain. 
But I will declare, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. So, Father, I pray. I pray now in the name that is above all names the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who indwells every heart on this call right now. I pray in that name that your power, your fullness, your glory, your presence be manifested right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I come against every stronghold of the evil one. I come against every negative thing. I come every accusation, every word curse. And in the name that is above all name, in the name of the one who paid the price right now, I break it with the authority of the word of God. And I declare them free in the name of Jesus. Free in the name of Jesus. You are healed, Lord. We celebrated communion. You are present. Now, Lord, touch, touch, touch. Lift up your hands right there. Say, Lord, I want you to touch me. Touch, touch, touch. Go back, go back to the days when you were a baby in Christ, to the days when you woke up in the morning and you knew zero doctrine, but you knew there was somebody that cared. Let him touch you right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now, this is what grace is all about. Grace breaks a stronghold. The anointing breaks the yoke. Now, in Jesus' name. And now breathe in the presence. Breathe in the presence. Let the Lord feel your heart now. Let the Lord take the debris of accusations and rejection and judgments. Paul says, I consider that manure. That's a polite way of saying feces. Poo-poo. And he's saying, I flush it down the toilet. That's ugly. So let the Lord show you that the resentment, the pain, the anger, the feel of victim that you have felt is like, and I'm going to be very blunt here, is like the poo-poo in the toilet. When you see it, you press the thing and you flush it away. Now, in the name of Jesus, it's by grace that he does it. It's by grace that he cleanses us. It's by grace that he gives us newness of life. Oh, Lord, you are so wonderful. So wonderful, Lord. So wonderful. You see, the devil uses people to hurt us. And then we build them because we feel that they violated our jurisdiction. I am in charge. I am the pastor. I am the worship leader. I am the apostle. Why don't they do this or that? So before I give you the next point, I would like for you and me to take off our crowns and put them at the feet of our Lord. What do I mean by that? The Bible says he made us kings and queens. You are a queen or you are a king over an ecclesia, over a ministry, over a family, right? But you are not the king of kings. You are just a king. He is the king of kings. I would like for everybody now, let's do a prophetic act. Take off your crown. I take off my crown as the head of TOW Global and I put it at the feet of Jesus. And I say, Lord, it's not my kingdom, it's your kingdom. It's not my church, it's your church. It's not my anointing. Tell him that, it's your anointing. 
I am nothing without you, Jesus. And now look up to the Lord and tell him with me, you are the king of kings. You are the king of kings. Tell him that. You are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the master of all. You are the Lord of lords. Say it. Amen. Enthrone him. Enthrone him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a freedom. If it's his church, he takes care of it. If it's his ministry, he makes provision. But when we hang on to it, now we become responsible. Ooh, I feel such a fresh wind blowing up on you right now. This is a new day. This is a new day. Now, how do we go forward? Well, look how Paul puts it. Very, very simple. He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, he said, that we no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again on our behalf. My friends, for the Lord to fulfill his destiny in your life and my life, for you and I to overcome a spiritual warfare, we must stop living for ourselves and live for him. That means that your time, your money, your talents are no longer yours. They are the Lord's. So this is what it says here in verse 15. To live for him who died, we get that one clear, but also rose from the dead. And the problem is that so often we are stuck on the cross and we ignore the empty tomb. If he rose from the dead, he's there with you. If he rose from the dead, he's next to you right now, every minute of the day. We don't have to make an appointment to talk to him. You live in him, you move in him, and you should exist in him. Oh, let the Lord speak to you now. The cross is great, but the cross is the beginning. I mean, is the resurrection, is the manifest presence of Jesus. I mean, Ruth and I had walked with the Lord over six decades, but when we came to a deeper understanding of the manifest presence of Jesus, to live in his presence, to feel his presence, to know that we are with him, I mean, all of a sudden, a craving for holiness took care of us. And my friends, there is a destiny for Hawaii. Hebrews 12, 27, 28 speaks of high level of spiritual warfare. God says once and for all, this is my last pass. This is the, 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 the Hail Mary pass of God, okay? This is the, the, this guy Curry three-pointer, okay? That beat the other team in the last minute of the game. Once and for all, I will shake the systems of the world. I will shake the economies and government and organized religion and healthcare and even the unseen spiritual powers. I will shake them so that only that which is unshakable will remain. And that is the ecclesia. And my friends, whatever you hang on to, your money, your church, God forgive the blasphemy, your expertise, your ministry, it's going to disappear. God says, I will shake everything until everything that is shakeable has disappeared. 
And that's why Paul says, how do you survive that? Verse 16, 2 Corinthians 5. Therefore, from now on, we know no one according to the flesh. And even though we have known Christ according to the flesh as a baby, as a friend, as the one who sat at the table with us in the flesh, we know him thus no longer. So folks, the very corrupt political environment gets to us because we are looking at people in the flesh. We are looking at Democrats in the flesh and Republicans in the flesh. And the most stupid thing that Christians do is to expect that non-believers should behave like believers when they are not believers yet. A snake is a snake. A pig is a pig, okay? A non-believer is a non-believer. But if we see them in Christ as forgiven, if we see them in Christ, the one who offended you, okay, as the one that Christ paid the price, yeah, but they haven't repented yet. That's the other trick of the devil. How many people repented at the cross? Only one that I know. Right? The thief. How many did he forgive? Everybody. Because he says, I don't care what they are doing to me today. I know what I will do to them when I forgive them. I'm going to set them free. The devil deals in legalities. Oh, you offend them. They owe you. You do this. You do that. The Lord flushes the toilet and says they are forgiven. So receive that. Hawaiians are the most interesting combination of the sweetness of the papaya with the roughness of a warrior. And unless you let go and you forgive, you're going to be warriors. But in captivity, you will be like Samson. You will be chained. Your eyes will be taken off. But if you can look beyond that and you can say, I don't know anybody in the flesh. We all deal with people that are what I call God's sandpaper. Sandpaper is not a nice thing to have rubbing on you, right? But it can really take away a lot of rough spots in us. And folks, that's what I see. Because look what, what happens if you don't do that. When Paul says in the following verse, if we are in Christ, we are new creation. The old things passed away. It, behold, they all became new things. And now we are reconciled with God through Christ. But we must be reconciled to God because God is holding the world in his hand and the world is not reconciled to God yet. And that's why Paul says, and working together with him, we urge you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Every time we fail to forgive immediately, every time we fail to extend grace to the one that sinned, we have taken the grace of God in vain. Because grace is good for only one thing, sin. I mean, Alan Cardenas gives migrant headaches to the devil every day, every week. He's embracing people that are undesirable. <laughs> He's loving people that have crucified him. He's going there and the devil cannot hit him because God gave him that aloha spirit, okay? 
to bless people. So look what Paul says. Do not take the grace of God. For he says, at the acceptable time, I listen to you. And on the days of salvation, I help you. Remember the day that you got saved? He heard your cry. Remember that day? November 16, 1958, 7 p.m. for me. Lord, help me. I heard your cry. And I help you. Right? Was that powerful? Was it? Was it life-changing? Yes. Well, go back to that day. That grace is still in you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And it says here, giving no cause for offense in anything that the ministry will not be discredited. And I conclude with these folks. There is a deposit in Hawaii. You have been modeling reconciliation. You have seen snippets and flashpoints of the grace of God. What happened and began to happen with entertainers is extraordinary. That hasn't happened anywhere else. Right? But that ministry has to go beyond that. And what I see in the spirit, and again, it's your jurisdiction, not mine, is that Hawaii is very close to a tipping point, a tipping point, a tipping point, where the grace of God will be manifested in every sphere of that island nation. And we have to make sure that the ministry is not discredited. And how do we do that? And I want you to listen carefully. I'm reading chapter six. But in everything, commending ourselves as servants of God in much endurance, in afflictions, in hardships, in distresses, in beatings, in imprisonment, in tumults, in labors, in a sleeplessness, in hunger. That puts it in a different light, right? The devil throws the kitchen sink at you and you say, okay, anything else? In purity, in knowledge, in patience, in kindness, in the Holy Spirit, in genuine love, in the word of truth, in the power of God, by the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and the left, by glory and dishonor, by evil report and good report, regarded as deceivers and yet true, as unknown yet well known, as dying yet behold we live, as punished by not put to death. Nothing, nothing frustrates the devil more that when he hits you, he knocks you down, and he cannot kill you. Because in the analogy that Paul uses of the gladiator, the gladiator could bring down the other gladiator, but couldn't kill it until the emperor, or who sat in the emperor's chair, went like this. And can you imagine the frustration of a gladiator that fought to the finish, have the guy down, has the sword to his neck, all he needs is this, this. And the emperor says this, ah! Hawaiians, let's frustrate the devil all over Hawaii. Let's bless rather than blast. Unknown yet well known, dying yet behold we live, punished yet not to death, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor and yet many 
making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. You say, what does this have to do with spiritual warfare? Everything. Everything. You can be, you can say yes to God and be welcome into the fellowship of his sufferings and be placed by God in the tough spot to irritate the devil. The highest level of a spiritual warfare is when God is playing ping pong with the devil and you are the ball in the game. My friends, I believe with all my heart that Hawaii is about to be revealed as God's Hawaii. But don't put back that crown until he tells you so. Let's do an exercise. If I say, Samuel, what do you say? Greatest prophet. If I say Moses, the great legislator. If I say Daniel, right? I'm going to tick off some names. Daniel, Esther, Gideon, Joseph, right? Shamua, Shapat, Igal. Who are they? Palti, Gadiel, Gadi, Amiel, Setur, Nabi, Jewel. Who are those 10 guys? They are the 10 spies that came back and chose a negative report. If I say Joshua, if I say Caleb, you smile. Because they say we can possess the land. We will go through hardships. We will fight. We will put sweat and tears and blood, but we shall overcome. That's what I submit to you, my friends. And I clo close with this quote from Paul. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Every time you are weak, the power of God is bestowed on you in an extraordinary way. You may say, but Ed, you don't understand how tough it is. No, I don't. Neither you understand how tough it is for me. But I like to be like Job, who says, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end, he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, leprosy, yet in my flesh, I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Because even though I have no evidence. And even though my skin is being destroyed. I know that my redeemer lives. And my friends. That is the key to victorious spiritual warfare. I know that he died on the cross, but I know that he rose from the dead. I know that he's with me. I know that he's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And when I surrender to him, I become flotsam on his river. And where the river goes, it brings life. So, Father, I pray now. I pray, Lord, that the destiny that you have for everybody Oh, Lord, ambush us, kidnap us, clip us from behind, knock us down, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, intervene any way you deem necessary. Like Saul on the road to Damascus, knock us down. But, Lord, do not let this opportunity pass. 
Now is the day of salvation. Now is the moment when you are speaking. Now is when the visitation is coming. Oh Lord, I pray for everybody in Hawaii today to be set free now, immediately. From any bondage of the evil one, whether it be addiction, bitterness, bad memories, hurts from the past, all things are made new right now in Jesus' name. And I want you to respond to that and say, yes, Lord, I receive it. And lift up your hands, say, Lord, I receive it. Come on. Come on. Respond. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. You have been set free. The devil will try to pull you back. Say, no, I'm a new creation. I'm moving forward. Do a prophetic act. If the stronghold was fear of poverty, write the check and give it to the poor. Whatever fear the devil threw at you, throw the opposite at him. And folks, I believe that if we have your right hand of fellowship, we are going to do a lot of damage to the kingdom of God. And then the, and those that are of Hawaiian ancestry will be honored as they should. And those that are resident will be delivered of any plantation spirit. And we will see the goodness of the Lord flowing all over the islands. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. Ed, thank you so much for that uh, message. And I want to share with you something that happened last night in our Ecclesi Accelerator. Um, as I shared with you in March 19 in Anakuli, one of the things that I've seen is our Native Hawaiians being treated as second class citizens. And that's why we recruited a bunch of them to uh, take the Ecclesi Accelerator. One of the praise reports we heard last night one of our um, Hawaiian homestead leaders, after battling with the, uh, the state government <clears throat> on a number of issues, were finally invited at a place of table and this uh, table last night, two nights ago, and the spiritual climate has shifted as they took the Beatitudes of Luke chapter 10, the principles and practices of the Ecclesi Accelerator. God gave her a vision of where the chair would sit, where the other government authority would sit where they will sit and they came together utilizing Luke chapter 10 and has, it was a favorable um, uh, connection. And out of that time, they said, are we not here to judge you, punish you? We love you. We just want to work with you. At the end of the meeting, we got nine acres, nine acres that our state is going to work to give back to our high wine people that they're going to lead. So Ed, I know that we are so blessed not just in Nanakuli, but it's starting to spread. And so I wanna just thank you. Thank you for pouring into us. Thank you for coming to serve us. Thank you for just always being um, faithful. And if I speak on my behalf, even when I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> even when I'm I when MIA or not always responding promptly on time, I repent in the name of Jesus, but Ed, we're in it to win it. Not only we're we going to receive this message, but we're going to live it out together in, in, in reconciliation to graduation on June 25th to August 6th to the next round of Ecclesia on September 2nd and leading up to the global conference. And Ed, you are welcome. And what I sense from the Lord as you share this message is it's not your conference, Ed. It's not our conference, Ed. I mean, Hawaii, a Hawaiian conference, it's our conference is breaking a spiritual uh, four levels of poverty that we can put we can put our hands and feet to work together to go for it. That is this not a study, it's a lifestyle and a culture, transformational culture that we're bringing together. So thank you. I think it's timely. And I think Cal wants to repent or share something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> thanks so much, Alan. Um, and Ed, thank you so much. Uh, I am right now in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, and so uh, this is, uh, 
the headquarters of our, our denomination. But um, as I'm as you're sharing today, um, a, a couple of things. One is that I believe that you know I really really appreciate you, Ed, for asking all of us for our blessing and really in many ways our permission to come to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And, you know, honestly, you had done that with me, but there's never been anyone who has done what you just have done. Mm -hmm. To come and to ask for permission and blessing for the people of the land, um, to come and to share with us the honor that it is bestowing upon us is huge that this is something that it's not like you know the great white hope coming in to rescue all of us <laughs> it really is you know all of us working together that the one hope is jesus christ amen that we come in his name and that we're going to do this together and uh, as I look upon all of our people here, you know, I, I mean, and, and just by a show of your hands, do we have, do we, don't we have the blessing to welcome him in and to welcome in, transform our world, Hawaii, to participate with us for the transformation of Hawaii? So just raise your right hands, you know, look at that. Wow, people raising both hands. <laughs> And so we are all extending both hands of fellowship to you. You know, you can show your videos if you're on, uh, uh, you know, your video is not showing. But we just want to show you, Ed, that we are extending the right hand of fellowship. Amen. And, and not only the right hand of fellowship, but the left hand of aloha to be both aloha and ohana, Amen. that we come together you know, in aloha for one another and as of one ohana and as being God's family. And that this conference, like what Alan has declared, is our conference. You can see the hands being raised all over. We, Ed, we welcome you. Amen. Thank you. And we thank you so much for this huge blessing. Everybody can... Unmute your phones and yell chihu or amen or whatever you want to do in what Amen. Amen. I'm gonna ask if if it's okay for Ellie to pray a blessing to amen. welcome you guys. Welcome to OW Global. To bring their conference to Hawaii. Ellie, would you do that, please? Yes, Lord, we we honor, we extend our fellowship uh, to Ed, to Till Global, in the name of Jesus Christ. And as we welcome Ed and the team, Lord, essentially we are welcoming you, Lord. Yes. It's what you desire to give to Hawaii from heaven through Ed and the team and we thank you lord and we 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 make room lord in our hearts in our minds and our schedules lord in our whole life lord we are saying lord that you will transform hawaii in the way in the likeness and the desires of your heart and your will and we are in agreement to that lord we welcome that. We desire that, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you're calling us to partner with you and to partner with one another, Lord. Mm -hmm. That this is a co-missioning. This is a co-laboring. And with great excitement and hope and anticipation, Lord, mm -hmm. we get to work together, empowered by your grace, and your ecclesia in Hawaii to be the ecclesia, to be the Hawaii you have called us to be, Lord, not just for Hawaii, but for the world. Amen. So we welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Ed, the team, Ed and Ruth. And Lord, we, we're excited about what 
you're going to do in us, through us, and with us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, folks. Thank you. Love you very much. Love you very much. All right. Alan, I hand it back to you. Well, thanks again, uh, Ed, for joining us. Thanks for the awesome word. But more importantly, thank all of you, uh, because you are the key to transformation here in the islands. And we hope and pray that you will stay connected with us. We've got some, uh, again, some important information coming up. Uh, conference registration is coming up. Again, uh, Ed had reserved uh, and a team had reserved 100 rooms at the Hilton Hawaiian Village and 70 percent of the rooms are gone already so we need to know if you are interested in attending a conference and staying at the hotel because if so we may have to increase the rooms before it is it is locked in so um i see guy does the guy have a question thanks ellie yeah this um hey guy i just wanted to say to ed um that as a Hawaiian, we accept you as one of our own. And we welcome you like one of our own. And I, I just felt a real pressing from the Lord um, mm. that you are our spiritual dad. Mm. Um, Cal's our spiritual grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> but you are a spiritual a spiritual power for us and um and i i just want to say that as a hawaiian to you thank you so much for everything and um you, you know you're you're more than welcome and you we, we bring you in as one of our own in jesus name oh thanks guy appreciate it and and ed um a number of guys leaders are taking the Ecclesi Accelerator and it's just growing in leaps and bounds in a personal transformation and the application that they're living out is just amazing. So thanks, Guy. Thanks for your love. Thanks for sharing that. And thanks for being a part of it. But you know, everybody, it's a cockle thing. We're better together. We're stronger together. This is where the manifest presence of God, the world will know that we are his disciples as we lokahi laulima together in and with the spirit of aloha for generations yet to be born. So thanks, you guys. Love you guys. Until we meet again, malamopono, ahuiho, God bless, and aloha. Aloha. Bye, everybody. Aloha. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thanks, Compton and Hawthorne, for joining us. Uh, Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs>